So in this video, uh, let's discuss about this uh, rules for LCAO, that means in uh, molecular orbital theory, what are the rules which have to be followed for the linear combination of these atomic orbitals? This is under the chapter uh, chemical bonding. Yes. Uh, according to the VBT, uh, yes, we have said that the hybridization takes place and the hybrid orbitals which are being formed of a particular atom will combine with the uh, orbitals of another atom, resulting in the formation of a molecule. But according to this molecular orbital, we have said that the atomic orbitals of different atoms which are forming a molecule will combine. So atomic orbitals will combine, resulting in the formation of this molecular orbitals. And this is happening by the linear combination of atomic orbitals. This combination, we are calling it as a linear combination of atomic orbitals. And there are certain set of rules which need to be followed for the combination. The first one is the atomic orbitals which are combining should have the same energy and the overlap should be more maximum in between the two orbitals and also they should have the same symmetry. The first one is they should have same energy which means the combining orbitals that means S plus S or P plus P or D plus D or S plus P, whatever. The combining orbitals, which they should have equal energy of almost the equal energy. If S is combining with P uh, in that particular molecule, the S orbital of one atom should be almost of the equal energy of the P orbital. Yes, the, orbi uh, the overlapping between these two orbitals of the different atoms should be maximum here. Right? So the greater the extent of the overlap, greater will be the or stronger will be the ball form. And the third one is they should have the same symmetry. The combining orbitals here, the atomic orbitals and resulting in the formation of molecular orbitals, the combining atomic orbitals should have the same symmetry. For example, we are taking the P orbital. The P orbital, we have three P orbitals which are oriented. This is along Y axis, this is X and this is Z. This is of one atom. So if um, the 2p orbital, I mean p orbital needs to combine with the p orbital of another atom, it should be that p orbital of one atom, that means only y of this can combine with the p of y of another orbital. Or px of this can combine only with the px, or pz of this can combine only with the pz. It, uh, PY does not combine with PX or PX does not combine with CA, PZ. That means the symmetry of the combining orbitals should al also matters and they should have the same symmetry for the proper combination. Okay, that means say, yeah, two PZ orbital of an atom can only combine with the two PZ of another atom, but cannot combine with two PX or two PA uh, orbitals because they have different symmetry because they are oriented along a different axis. Right. Here, uh, we have discussed that uh, the atomic orbitals here will follow a set of quantum numbers or, or defined by a set of quantum numbers, that is principal quantum number, azimuthal quantum number, magnetic moment quantum number, and spin quantum number. So the molecular orbitals are also defined by the same set of quantum numbers, that is principal quantum number N, azimuthal quantum number L. Now, instead of magnetic quantum number, is replaced by another quantum number called as lambda and this spin quantum. Right. So the principal quantum number n, uh, which uh, means that is equal to the energy level, or the is equal. It gives the shells. All right. This uh, azimuthal quantum number is the subshells which are present in the uh, in this shell. See well, how many values this uh, azimuthal quantum number have. L is equal to zero to n minus one. Right. If n is uh, one, uh, L will be zero. Right? So it will have equal number of values as n, but uh, it will range from 0 to n minus 1. For example, if this is the energy level, this is the nucleus. If this is n is equal to 1, uh, then l is equal to 0. That means it is s orbital. For example, if n is equal to 2, uh, l is equal to 0 and 1, n minus 1, right? 0 to n minus 1. This is s and this is p n is equal to 3, l is equal to 0, 1, 2, s 
P and T. Right? So, and uh, what is this new quantum number? This is replacing this lambda. So we'll come to that later on. And here, uh, oh, I mean, uh, Pauli's exclusion principle, Hans rule of maximum multiplicity, and of core rule, all these rules are also applied to these molecular orbitals as we are studying for atomic orbitals. Right, what does this Pauli exclusion principle say? This says that no two electrons in the same molecule can have all the four uh, set of quantum numbers the same. That means it, at least one of the quantum numbers should be different. At least the spin quantum number will be different, right? We have studied for the atomic numbers. So no two electrons in the same molecule would have all the four quantum numbers same. At least one will be different. And Hans rule of maximum multiplicity. What does this rule say? Yes, this rule says that here, when degenerate orbitals are available, then first they become half filled, right? Then the pairing occurs. This is what is Hans rule of maximum multiplicity. Degenerate orbitals are available. What happens? First, that becomes half filled, and then the pairing occurs. Of a principle, what does this rule say? This is very simple. Here, the orbitals are filled with the electrons in the order of their increasing energy. First, the lower energy, lower energy orbitals are filled first, and then followed by the higher energy. Right uh, now, uh, yeah, the spin quantum number, spin quantum number, that means in an orbital, if two electrons are present, one will have plus sign and other will have a minus sign. That means they will have opposite spins. And uh, now we'll read about what is this, uh, uh, I mean, the quantum number, which is replacing the magnetic quantum number that is lambda. Yes, this lambda will have the same set of values as M, that is, plus L2 minus L, right? Plus L2 minus L. So uh, L have S, P, D, and F. And uh, this one, instead of uh, this one, we have what? Uh, plus L2 minus L, the same values. The lambda will have the same values as the L that is plus as M that is plus L2 minus L, right? If lambda is equal to zero, if lambda is equal to zero, uh, then the orbital is symmetrical around the axis and there we are calling it a sigma orbital, right? If lambda is equal to plus or minus one, then there we are calling it as pi orbitals. If uh, lambda is equal to plus or minus two, then we are calling it as delta orbitals, right? This is about this um, lambda, right? So now what is the order of the filling up of the orbitals um, for heavier atoms, I mean for oxygen and the heavier atoms uh, than oxygen? homodiatomic molecules, that means O2, F2, like that. right? The order of increasing energy of this molecule, first the molecular orbitals are represented by sigma 1s, sigma star 1s, sigma 2s, sigma star 2s, like this, right? So what is the order of filling up of these energies? So for oxygen and heavier than oxygen, this is the order which is followed by the sigma 1s, sigma star 1s, sigma 2s, sigma star 2x, then comes sigma 2pz, that means which is forming a sigma, which is oriented along the internuclear axis. Then comes pi 2px and pi 2py, with these two are degenerate orbitals. These two also are degenerate orbitals. Then comes pi star 2px and pi star 2pz. Then comes sigma star 2pz, sigma 2pz. Last comes to sigma star 2pz. These two uh, sets are the degenerate set of orbitals where pi 2px and pi 2py are degenerate and also pi star 2px and pi star 2py are degenerate. So they're calling it as doubly degenerate. Now, let us uh, 
come to lighter elements, still nitrogen from oxygen, that is the order of filling up of the energy. For a homonuclear diatomic molecules like Li2B2, B2C2, till N2, here. So the, uh, here the energy is the energy of sigma 2pz and pi 2px and 2py are almost the same. Uh, I mean, a very little energy difference which is uh, found here. So here we can see that the pi 2px and pi 2py, which are the degenerate orbitals, are higher in energy when compared to that of the sigma 2pz. Right? Sigma 1s, sigma star 1s, sigma 2s, sigma star 2x. Pi 2px is equal to pi 2py, then comes sigma 2pz. Pi star 2px is equal to pi star 2py and sigma star 2pz. I write the order for you once again, that is lighter elements till nitrogen. This is sigma 1s, sigma star 1s, sigma 2s, sigma star 2s. Here first comes pi. Yeah, pi to p x, pi to p y, sigma to p x y z. Then comes pi star to p x pi star to p by, then comes sigma star till nitrogen. And for oxygen, let's see this, the same thing here, but just the difference in this will come here, okay? First, this will come. First, to p z, then pi to p x, pi to p by, same thing again. Only the difference is this comes here, this comes there, because of the little difference in the energy in between the two uh, p z and two p x and y, sigma and pi. Then comes sigma star. This is the order of filling up of the orbitals, I mean the molecular orbitals till nitrogen and uh, from oxygen onwards, right? So till nitrogen, the uh, energies of pi to px and pi to py are less than sigma to pz, but from oxygen onwards, the energy of sigma to pz is more than pi to px and pi to py, right? If you like my uh, video, please do like, share, and subscribe my channel. Uh, the whole chapter has been discussed on my YouTube channel. Uh, the details of it have been given in the description box below. You can uh, go back and check with it.